The entire premise of the video was the fact that you are so fat that another person had to physically leave the seat that they were next to you in to move to another seat because you were so big. And you think that people weren't going to talk about your body. Okay. All right, dude. Just, <laughs> just making sure. And you go, but I don't want to deal with having good stuff in my life. I don't want to be healthier. I don't know how I feel about being healthier and having things be good for me. What are you talking about? How, how deep in the oppression pool are you that you, you're literally looking at having better treatment in terms of health in society-wise as not a good thing? Oh no, this went exactly as I expected it to go. I am a fat person talking about my fat lived experiences without being riddled in shame, guilt, or on a weight loss journey. It is only going to be met with the general public being cruel, ignorant, and making assumptions about my body and my life. That they you can make, you can have these lived experiences. Oh, it's so cringy when people say they have these lived experiences as a fat person. It just, oh, it just makes me just curl up in a ball and like suck myself off. It's okay to have these quote unquote lived experiences, and, but it's, it's, just, it's another thing entirely to expect people to not comment on those things in a negative way, especially if you've made these videos on a public platform, okay? Like it doesn't make any sense. Now, if you don't know, this woman, just for some background context, she made a video saying that she was on a flight, like I guess a week ago of the time that I was making of this video, and she sat down next to somebody on a flight, and the person next to her, I guess was not liking the fact that she had to sit next to somebody very, very obese and decided that she needed to be changed seats. And this girl was so incredibly offended at the fact that because she was so fat, another person chose not to sit next to her if there was an option to. And she definitely had a, a lot to say about it in the video. I've already made a reaction video to it. But the, ma the main point here is... This person felt so entitled that another person should not also feel entitled to not feel like they need another seat, which I, I, I personally don't understand. I don't get it personally. But again, if you are so fat that you think that a person shouldn't feel uncomfortable while you're sitting next to them, dude, why are you that big to begin with where other people are feeling uncomfortable? Your gut is like sliding over onto, onto their kneecap or something like that. It's just not appropriate. And to sit there and claim that that person is in the wrong for that is also incredibly crazy. I, where do you even get the audacity to say th things like this? Anyway, that's the context. Met with the general public being cruel, ignorant, and if you hear something in the background, it's it, there's there's guys working in the background, dude. I don't, I can't help it. They've been here all day. I, if I don't record it now, I won't be able to for the rest of the day. So, I'm sorry. I hope you guys can forgive it loss journey it is only going to be met with the general public being cruel ignorant and it's, making. i feel like it's not even cruel to say because like what you're saying right now is that you don't have the ability to lose weight you're saying that this other person shouldn't feel like they have to move seats even though you might have been literally intruding upon their space because you're so fat and the assumptions that you say that we are working under is that you could lose weight and that you don't have to be in a position to make other people on flights feel uncomfortable because you're so fat. You understand? So is it not an assumption? Why can't you lose weight? Is it like impossible for you to lose weight? Like, what do you mean by cruel? You were literally being cruel to that other girl by saying that she was a bitch or something like that. That she, should, she shouldn't have asked for another seat. That she should have just put up with you sitting next to her with your gut hanging over on the side. Like, how, how can you say these things? Do, don't you see how hypocritical it is to say that? Okay, anyway. Assumptions about my body and my life that they actually know nothing about. If you're so fat that another person on a flight is going, damn, I need to change seats. This girl is big. I'm gonna need to change seats. She's so, like, it's not, at that point, you're describing the very act to which we are, the we have the context of. So I don't even understand what you mean by that. Like, how, it's not about us, like, not knowing. You're telling us. You're saying you're so fat that another person had to move. Cruel, ignorant, and making assumptions about my body and my life that they actually know nothing about. I've been doing this work for 10 years. It is That is sad, bro. You've been doing this work for 10 years. What work is that? You're so fat. You're telling me you're so fat. You're physically intruding on other people's spaces. And you're calling that work. What is the work exactly? Oppressing other people with your stomach? <laughs> being so big that you literally can't you you're intruding on other people's spaces how does this work exactly what do you mean by and, and the fact that you've been this fat for 10 years like you've been fat 
for this long and you've chose not to do anything about it and yet you still feel the need to post these videos on the internet and claim that you're the one that's oppressed i don't understand it i don't get it how can you it's not it's one thing to say i'm oppressed because of something that you cannot change right that makes sense because like you can't change those things. How the hell are you going to stop being oppressed in this particular manner if you're like a black guy or a gay dude or something like that, right? You can't stop other people from being biased and things like that. But if you are a person that is fat and you're claiming that you're under these like social stigmas, all these people want to hate you because you're so fat and stuff like that. Dude, you are literally talking about a video where you said you were so big you were intruding on another person's space. And now you're saying that we're coming at you in a derogatory way. I don't get it. I don't get it. Always met with a wall of hate, but that is not why I share things. I share them so that other fat people can see those experiences. And if and when they happen to them, they will know that they aren't alone. You're such a hero. You're, oh, you're such a hero. You're not doing it for yourself. No, you're not doing it for me. No, you're doing it for other fat people who are also in the same bracket as you. That if they've ever had the problem of sitting next to somebody and having their gut intrude on another person's space, they don't feel bad about it. What are you talking about, man? What is this hero that we need, not the one we deserve moment that you're going on? Is this like your Harriet Tubman moment? What are you talking about, man? You are literally talking about being so fat you, 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 you've intruded in other people's places. And instead of taking the criticism that other people have said, you're instead going, but I'm not doing it for myself. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell people my story to make it seem like I'm entitled or anything like that. I'm doing it so other people can also relate to it. What the fuck are you talking about? Just keep it a buck. You did it because you felt like it was a worthy story to tell and you felt entitled enough for other people to hear this story as well. That this isn't something that has only ever happened to them and that it has happened to other cool fat people cool. that they know in cool the- Cool fat people. What is that prefix? Their community. This is, shockingly, not about you. Which but it's is not about you either, right? What are you talking about? Why does it matter if it's not about me? If you post a video online, okay, and you have an intended bracket to which you wish to appease, that doesn't mean there isn't an unintended bracket that it's also going to see that video that doesn't like that you understand and in the same way that you are able to post the video that other people disagree with they are also going to make responses that you don't agree with and granted you can 100 make a video in response to those people making videos about making videos about what you made a video about right you could totally do that but you can't be mad at those people being there if you post it on the internet it's on the internet it is what it is you get what i'm saying it's like it's here forever how can you be upset and other people say, you could be upset with the words they say, but the responses themselves should not be criticized. It's why I started that video by saying, if you're not fat, this video isn't for you. But of course, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. That what's like I'm fucking talking about. Oh, if you're not fat, this video is not for you. So like, does that automatic, that's like saying like, oh, criminal with the gun that's intending to kill somebody. Don't do that. And they go, oh, damn, you, oh, you got me. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I was really going to. I was really going to kill a lot of, you know, I was going to do a lot of things. I was going to do a lot of illicit activities, but uh, you told me not to. So I guess I'm just going to go home. No, that's not how it happens, dude. Just because you said this video is not made for you doesn't mean the people that you're saying the video is not made for don't watch the video. So, okay. I don't even understand why you would even say that. I feel like if you said that to somebody and you went, this is not for you, I feel like that would just encourage the other group of people that you don't want watching it to watch it. I did that video by saying- In the same way that like, if you were raised in like a really, really racist family and your mom and your dad were like, you know, black people are gross, no whatever. You know, Sarah, Sarah never date black men. Black men are gross, disgusting, and they, they have lotion. And then, you know, when, when Sarah leaves the house and she goes, Fuck you, mom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suck BBCs and I'm gonna live my life in college and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna swallow down BBCs because you're racist. And I'm gonna bring them back home for Thanksgiving dinner and it's gonna be awesome because he's gonna bring his cocoa butter and his ankle bracelet. It's like one of those things, you know? It's, a, it, you're rebelling against it. Like, you're not gonna tell me what I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna do the thing you don't want me to do in response to you telling me you don't want me to do it. Unity. This is, shockingly, not about you, which is why I started that video by saying, if you're not fat, this video isn't for you. But of course, oh my god, it would be too tempting not to shame me for my body. Oh, bro, listen, if you're put, it's not about shaming you for your body. If you're making a video and you're talking about how, if you're, if you're making a video and I'm talking, if I made a video and I was like, listen guys, my penis is just big. I'm bricked up right now. I can't believe how big this shit is literally ginormous, crazy, massive Megalodon meat. 
and I I expect people to not talk about that, I'm dumb. Why the fuck would I bring it up in a conversation and not want somebody to talk to me about it or at least expect somebody to talk to talk to me about the thing that I just brought up? So if your entire video is about you being fat and you expect people to not not talk about you being fat, why the fuck did you even make the video at all? The entire premise of the video was the fact that you are so fat that another person had to physically leave the seat that they were next to you in to move to another seat because you were so big. And you think that people weren't going to talk about your body. Okay. All right, dude. Just, <laughs> just making sure. Complete stranger on the internet because... It doesn't matter if you're a complete stranger on the internet. Why do you have to keep preferencing with these, like, weird, weird languages that you're using, dude? You're, you're a stranger to the internet in the same way that a commenter is a strange person on the internet watching your video. Why does it matter if they're a stranger on the internet? Everybody is a fucking stranger on the internet, dude. It's the most bullshit statement just saying that to make it seem like we're the unreasonable ones for commenting. When you do want people to comment, I'm sure you have no problem with other strangers on the internet commenting in positive ways, right? No, you probably don't there. So why are you saying this as it's a, as if it's a negative thing? It's You obviously don't give a fuck when it's people in your corner. God, it would be too tempting not to shame me for my body, a complete stranger on the internet, because, you know, hobbies are expensive. This woman, that woman is like, there's something wrong with her, dude. That's crazy. I, can you imagine saying everything incorrect in a video and then claiming it like so confidently to be your truth and have none of, none of it mean anything at all? I'm terrified to lose weight. Because, you know, hobbies are expensive. I'm kind of terrified to lose weight. I was recently diagnosed with PCOS and the medication that the doctors want to give me is, you know, from the similar family of our friend Ozempic. Um, and, you know, ever since I realised that, you know, there's been a lot of thoughts and feelings um, about the possibility of losing weight. And, um, you know, it's not going well. <laughs> what is man people nowadays dude it's just i get it it might be really comforting to stay in your little circle of people that you feel safe in but sometimes it's really really beneficial to go outside your circle and get other people to tell you the truth or maybe things that you don't want to hear because how do you know you're correct on something if you've never had it be tested. You could for your whole life believe two plus two equals three because you've never went to anyone else ever in your entire life and asked them what they think two plus two equals and got the real information. It's like that. If you're always in these circles of people that are just yes queening you consistently over and over and over again, you're never going to grow. And it might be okay to do that. Like in the sense of like you have friends that like really, really like uh, help you out with your stuff or they're really, really um supportive and things like that. But... If you ultimately never reach out or like expand yourself in other places, how do you know you're ever wrong? So when I hear people go, I don't want to lose weight because I'm scared to how people might react to me. What the fuck are you talking about? You're going to have changes in your life regardless of whether or not you want them or not. Isn't it better to self-induce them if you know it's going to be beneficial, especially if you have PCOS and the doctor's literally telling you that you need to lose weight? Why the fuck are you talking about like the... Isn't it? Okay, whatever, dude. Whatever, man. Go keep going. So many of my experiences across my life have been informed by what I look like and what I've always looked like, which is some form of this. But, you know, in earlier years, less stylish. <laughs> I, I understand that looking at yourself like this is such an interesting way. Okay? I always imagine when people look at themselves, it should be the person first. Like you, yourself, the individual, you should be first, whoever you are. So for me, it would be David right? Me, I'm first. So everything else, the groups that I'm a part of are like secondary, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, right? So like, I know I'm a white guy, but I don't really class, I never classify myself as a white dude because it's never relevant in any circumstance ever to classify myself as a white dude. I classify my, when people ask me, who are you? I just go, hey, I'm David, not I'm a white dude from, you know, whatever, right? No, I'm not, no, I'm, I'm a fucking, I'm David, you know? And then everything else is secondary, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So when I hear people say, I've only ever identified me or myself in this lifestyle of fatness. Why are you looking at it in this particular lens of I'm a fat person first? It's weird. It is so weird. You should be looking at yourself as the individual first. You are a person first and foremost, the individual, the groups are behind you. But in all seriousness, you know, pretty much every interaction, especially every relationship has been informed by me existing in a fat body. It's interesting. And there's a possibility that 
that might not be me at some point. Yeah, that's okay though. That's fine. There are going to be changes. In why does he? Why are you looking at it like that, as if it's a bad thing? Now, it might be a bad thing if it's like a negative change, right? And sure, she might be looking at it as a negative change, but dude, it's if anything, you should be looking at this as a neutral change at the bare minimum, dude. Because you people literally complain day in day out about all the traumas of being up, having fat phobia and internalized fat fat phobia in the medical system and all this other bullshit, systemic fat phobia. Wouldn't it be better, like just? Test it out, you know, just see what it's like on the other side, no? <laughs> now, if this was something I had to think about like five years ago, then I would have been all aboard. I would have done anything to lose that Okay. Weight. Um, I'm not the same person I was five years ago. I Why not? What? What happened to you in the five years? Did you just become too comfortable in your circle of... Man, it's just terrible when I hear this shit, dude. What I'm basically hearing from this person is I've indoctrinated myself enough to accept myself exactly the way I am, even though I know it's incredibly not good for my health. It's d definitely not helping me in any way. I'm literally facing discrimination, their quotes, not mine, every single day, and you've just accepted it. Okay. All right. Totally cool. I've had a really long journey. I mean, the majority of, you know, my online presence is about fat liberation, about me existing in a fat body and, and what that means to me in my life. I work so hard oh, I see. to separate my worth from my body, but at the same time... That doesn't even make any sense. You're literally just, you're literally describing you yourself as your fat body. You've just said that you've identified all the... Did I not hear her correctly like a few like a minute ago literally like a minute ago I'm pretty sure she said that she's existed in a body and she's only ever seen her interactions through the world through her fat body and now you're saying that you don't look you 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 try to separate you from your fat body no you don't you just told me you don't do that you literally just told me that you and your fat body are synonymous I'm understanding and advocating for the fact that fat bodies are treated differently within society everybody is treated differently within societies and sure different groups are also treated differently in societies this is also true but i think it's very very ignorant to not accept that as a truth and also something that is probably never going to change and it might not even be a bad thing and especially in this particular spectrum i'm obviously always going to say everybody should be treated equally but you should also be working under the understanding that certain people are just not going to be eligible for certain things, okay? That's pretty fucking obvious. If you're disabled and you're missing legs, you're not going to be able to run track. And that's okay. You don't have to run track. You could do other things. But if you're upset, if you have no legs and you're upset that you can't run track, what the fuck you want for me to do? I can't do shit about that. I don't even know why you're upset about this, dude. What am I going to do? What can society do for you? Nothing. You just, it is what it is. In the same way that if you're fat... And you're upset that you can't get a job because you can't stand up for eight hours a day or you can't walk upstairs. And then you yourself get upset by society or the establishment because they don't have elevator access or they're not willing to hire you because you are so fat. It is infeasible to hire you because it would be a detriment to the establishment. What do you want me to do about that? Because what you're asking is so incredibly ridiculous that this statement itself doesn't even make sense, let alone what it would be like in practicality. Do you just want people to hire fat people because? For no other reason than because? No, that doesn't make any sense. You have to at least acknowledge that there are going to be some truths, there are going to be some things that apply to you, and other things that I do not. That's all I got to say. We've seen it. We've seen people lose the weight and then just try to separate themselves from their fat bodies and, you know, and, and treat their fat bodies not too kindly. And yeah, because most of the time... You know why they do that though? You want to know why they do that? Oftentimes when you see people that were fat and then they lose weight and then they go, oh man, I can't wow i was fat and i i couldn't believe how unhealthy i was i couldn't believe how absolutely terrible my life was i hear it a lot you know why they do that because they're telling the truth because oftentimes when people lose weight they're not looking kindly at the past self because they knew now looking at it within hindsight seeing where they were and seeing where they are now they acknowledge that they were in a worse place than they were to the, at, at that current moment in time there are disadvantages to being fat, and when you lose that weight, you see those disadvantages instead of like coping, sniffing the copium as hard as you possibly can to try to justify being fat, even though we know it's not good for you. That's the reason. And if you're seeing these things and you're going, I don't want to be that person, that's dumb. That's stupid. Why wouldn't you want to be an enlightened human being? Why wouldn't you want to be healthier? I don't know. Okay. And I don't want to do that. You don't want to lose weight because you're afraid that you might look at yourself before. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? What? That's like a gay man, okay? Not being gay. 
a closeted gay man, a man that only has sex with women. But every time he has sex with women, he leans over at the end of the bed like this and goes, why? You know, I just, I don't know. There's something about it. Like every time I have sex with women, I just feel like it's incomplete. Like I'm not, I don't really enjoy it. It's not really my thing. I don't really like it. I don't know. I just don't get it. And then one day you're sitting on the bus and you're just minding your own business. You got your ear, you got your headphones on, you're just like minding your own business, looking up. And then a homeless man, a black homeless man comes on the bus and he's, he, you don't see him. You don't acknowledge him because you got your headphones on, which I don't recommend doing, by the way. Always be aware, especially if there's homeless men around. And this guy comes on the bus and he's just fucking swinging his dick, right? He's just like, woo, right? And his shit just slashes across your mouth and sweetness across your lips, right? And then you smell the BBC. You smell the sweet marination of that man's penis. And then you realize, oh my God, that shit tastes good in my mouth. And then you realize the reason why you've never really liked women is because you always enjoy the sensation of another man's phallus within your mouth and you're gay. That's okay to be gay. Now you've acknowledged that you don't like women. You've really liked men. And you didn't know that because you were under this facade of thinking that being heterosexual was the bee's knees and it was the best for you until you taste, you tasted the sweet, beautiful deliciousness of the long john silver on your mouth you understand in the same way that if you're fat and you lose weight you didn't know that it was nothing you didn't know there was anything wrong with being fat because it was just how you were but when you lost the weight you realized wait a minute i think i was wrong i think i had some problems what's wrong with that how can you be afraid of something like that you're literally acknowledging that you're gonna feel better and your life's gonna improve and you're going I don't know. I, I I don't really know. Treat their fat bodies not too kindly, and I don't want to do that. Sad. As much as I would like to think that I wouldn't be that person, you know, there's no guarantees in this world. Yeah, no shit. Um, that would be okay though. You, you should want change. You don't want to be the same person that you. If you are the same person you were when you were 20 years old, you failed. You have to be a dip. Listen, there's nothing wrong with getting new information and changing the way that you think. Everybody does it consistently, and it's not a good thing to not change how you think. There are things about you that you should probably not change. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know, kids are cool people, right? Okay, cool. Are elderly people taking care of elderly people? These things, obviously. But if you believe something and you want to know if it's the truth or not, you have to test your beliefs. And if it comes back as your beliefs were wrong, it's okay to change those up. You understand? And I would, I would hate to do that to myself. Terrible. There's also something to be said for the fact that, you know, yes, we know that fat bodies are treated differently uh, than thinner people. But Duh. there's a difference between knowing it and experiencing it. And <laughs> you, you're, you don't want to be treated better. Is that what I'm hearing right now? <sighs> Man, these people, dude, these people are on some different fucking shit. I can't. Can you imagine looking at something so delectable, so delicious, and it's free? It's free. You can do it. And by the way. Even if you do take Ozempic, I'm sick of people just thinking that if you take Ozempic or other types of peptides or weight loss medications or even bi uh, bariatric surgeries, that it's a one and, one and done type of thing. Like you just get it and then you lose weight. No, it's not how that works. You still have to put in a ton of effort. There's no guarantee that if you take these particular medications that you're going to be 100 pounds lighter in a year. That's not how it works. You're going to have to put in a serious amount of work regardless of the medicine or the medication or the surgery or whatever. It's just a head start. It's just something that pushes you a little bit. You still need to put in a ton of work. So even this entire like monologue this woman's going on, which is like, if I take these drugs, I'm going to be thin. And I don't know if I'm going to treat my, my fat body with the respect that it deserves, even though my fat body is literally inefficient in every single way. I don't know. I'm going to, it's dumb because even in this scenario, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be an incredibly thin person at the end of like a month or two months or three months. There's a difference between knowing it and experiencing it and I'm not ready to experience that. Thank you. Um, I'd rather keep it as theory. Thank what? You. Thank you very much. All of this to say that, you know, I could have no effect of a weight. I could still be the exact same size in a year's time. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, it doesn't stop my brain from turning the cogs. Can you imagine a doctor telling you like, hey, you're going to need to do this in order to be healthy? Like you have this condition, but it's okay because we have this solution and it could literally benefit you tremendously. It could literally alleviate almost all your problems. And you go, but I don't want to deal with having good stuff in my life. I don't want to be healthier. I don't know how I feel about being healthier and having things be good for me. What are you talking about?
How how deep in the oppression pool are you that you, you're literally looking at having better treatment in terms of health in society-wise as not a good thing? Man, these people don't. ...the years time. But, um, <laughs> you know, it doesn't stop my brain from turning the cogs. And those are my thoughts. And I thought I'd share it just in case anybody's having, you know, similar feelings, you know, with all... If you're having similar feelings to this shit, dude, you got some issues. That's a problem. This woman, the way that she's thinking is an issue. That's not a good thing. Everything she just said was incredibly terrible. While you're watching Dune, please remember that fat suits are always fat phobic because thinner actors get awards for playing fat actors via prosthetics and makeup. But actual fat actors struggle to get those roles. And yes, this does apply to Brendan Fraser too, despite him being fat. So Brendan Fraser did get that role in The Whale. Man, they really hated that whale shit, bro. I, I can't believe the amount of people that had a problem with that whale shit. So what they're basically saying here is like, because fat people are fat, naturally, they're already fat, okay? Why would you go to, th why wouldn't you go to those fat people instead of going to actors who are obviously critically acclaimed, good people, like people that have already been shown that they can work with fat suits or they're just good actors in their wide range of what they can do? Why instead would you go for these people when you already have the fat actors? Ignoring the fact that, for one, those fat actors that you might want may not even exist. Like, in what scenario, for instance, if you're casting for the whale, the whale, I think the guy that played the, in the whale, I believe he was like seven, 800 pounds, like Brendan Fraser's character played that character very well. That character was like seven, 800 pounds, right? Where the fuck are you gonna get a triple A actor, okay? An actor of a very good class that can play a set, a, a person that is naturally, a person that is already organically seven, 800 pounds to get on set day in, day out to do this movie for, for potentially months at a time and do these shots. Do you, do you know how unpractical it is to have somebody of that person, like that particular type, quality of person to do these roles? That is ridiculous. That is a ridiculous ask. That person is going to have a heart attack every single fucking day showing up on set. Now, I understand that it's taking away roles from fatter people, but the premise that you're working under doesn't even make sense in a basic sense. You, where are these fat actors? Where are these seven, eight hundred pound, fucking pound actors, dude? You know where they are? They're at home. They're eating. They're little debbies. They're body slamming thousands of calories, and that's what they're doing. So if you're upset that we're casting thinner actors when we should be casting fatter actors, your claim doesn't make sense because those fat actors are not in movies they can't get out of bed let alone go on movie sets why do you think we're not casting them duh i need the health nut girls to understand that if you cut out specific ingredients or food group in your diet and you instant and you instant feel better and your waist flattens and your face is de-puffed it's not that it's it's not that that food is the devil you are just discovered You've just discovered you have a food allergy. Okay. Well, I mean, that's going pretty fucking deep. Most of the time, I feel like people would just go, oh, you know, maybe this food is, like, not necessarily the best for me. Like, most, a lot of people I know cut out carbs. A lot of people are doing this uh, carnivore diet right now, which, if you're having success with that, that's great. As long as you're getting your nutrients in there. It just might be that you don't like that particular type of food, or maybe a particular type of food is not necessarily the best for you, and you can supplement that food with another thing. Who knows? I don't know. I cut out wheat, meat, milk, sugar, alcohol, XYZ, and now my face and waist are snatched and I'm not sleepy and more, and I'm more energetic. I kind of agree with this when it comes to probably the milk or the alcohol. I, bro, who's that one comedian guy? Um, who is that guy, bro? He has like a really puffy face. He did that movie with Mark Hamill. Um, it was like called The Machine, dude. I forgot what that guy's name was. Joy. <laughs> No, no, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. It's the what? Listen. Okay, no, 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 wait a second. Wait. Okay. I almost passed out. You can see it in my eyes. You could not do it now. You couldn't do it now. You can't do it now. You couldn't do it then. That's why it's funny. 
you could. So this is, it's just so uncomfortable, bro. I, who watches this shit and then actually thinks this is like a genuine laugh? This is the most, this is one of the most cringiest things I've seen in a very, very long time. The most inorganic laugh. This, and then this guy over here, who's like, obviously, he's like, oh, well, I don't even know why this is fucking hilarious. Like, what are you talking about, dude? What, what why is, this guy is not laughing, but the two dudes in the middle, Brendan Schaub and Burt Kreischer. Burt Kreischer, I have no idea. Like, I, why is he famous? I have no fucking idea. An alcoholic. An alcoholic. This guy's an alcoholic. I've watched a few of his stand-ups, and I'm just, I don't know. Maybe it's funny to some people. I'm not here to say that he, he's not talented. But, dude, it's not that funny. It's not that funny, dude. Right? But we're going to finish. We're going we're gonna to watch the whole thing. You can do it now. You can do it now. Oh, you, no, you can't do it now. You couldn't do it then. That's why it's funny. You couldn't do it then. Oh, so bad, dude. It's so bad. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says, okay? You can like, you know, you, you, you can like him. You can like this guy. I'm sure Burt Kreischer has his appeals in certain people. But there, that this laugh, this fake laughter, dude, and the same thing for this guy feeding off each other. It's not funny. It's not, okay? I don't care what anybody says. It's not funny. It's not, I don't care. I don't care. But that dude has a really, 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 like, alcohol syndrome face. That guy is puffy. Red, he looks inflated constantly, dude. I forgot his name, dude, but he's a really terrible... Like, when I listen to him, it's so cringy, dude. Who is that guy? You know what I'm talking about? So cringy, bro. But uh, some people that have addictions to certain food groups or whatever, they may not really understand that that particular food that they're eating is an issue. Like, I knew a dude that drank a gallon of milk a day. He, he would literally drink an, an entire gallon of milk every single day. And he had a problem with ejaculating like he would have a, he would he would try to bust and he couldn't bust or whatever he, he had some issue with it and he went to the doctor and he got a shit test and he turns out that the milk that he was drinking was actually clogging up like I, don't, I forgot what the thing was but he was drinking so much dairy in a day that his nuts were like not producing a, as much um a semen or something like that it was weird i don't know exactly what was happening but yeah, certain foods will have some effects on you. But granted, I mean, that guy was eating. I mean, he was drinking like an entire gallon of milk every single day. Anyway, it's because you are allergic to eating too much for you. Or these things are healthy and beneficial to a lot of people, but not for you. Yeah, I mean, that's probably true. That's probably true. Some certain things you probably should not be eating. And that's okay. That's okay. You don't have to eat everything. Fat culture is getting getting passport pictures taken and feeling down because they look different from the ones you took six years ago prior because you've gained weight. <laughs> a, what a problem to have, dude. I look completely different. If you looked at my old, <laughs> man, if you looked at my old ID, dude, when I got my, when I got my license, right? When I was like, I think I got it when I was like 18, right? I looked, I did this fucking terrible face. I looked so musty. I looked so disgusting. My hair was greased up. It was terrible. And the I, I was convinced that when I took the picture, the lady was going to go, honey, baby, honey, baby, stop doing that face. You know, you can't be doing that here. I, I was I was convinced that she was going to say that because I'm like in my head, I was thinking when I go in here, I'm going to make this fucking face and then she's going to tell me no. But on the off chance, she doesn't tell me no. It's going to be fucking awesome. Right. So <laughs> so I went in there, filled out all the documents, 18, 18 years old, and I got it. And I took the picture and I, I made this face. Like I sat there and I did this. I did that face. She said nothing. And not only did she say nothing, that but when I filled it out, I, I guess, look, when you're at the DMV, you don't ask questions. You're just trying to be in and out. You're not trying to be there for more than like, you're, let's be honest, you're there for two hours, bare minimum, which is the most extra, ex, ex, terrible thing on the face of the earth. DMV is excruciatingly terrible, okay? There's kids crying. There's a homeless guy beating off at the corner. They keep asking you why you're here. I don't know. Like, I'm here to just get my shit taken, and I'm out. And then you have to wait because there's, like, 40 other people in front of you looking up at the fucking thing. You got your ticket, A24, A06. Ah, oh, damn. But there's, like, four different fucking number systems going on. It's all going on. Whatever. It's terrible. I put down my height. It's 5'10". And I guess she looked at that and said I was 5'4". And she put down on my ID that I'm 5'4". I promise that I'm not 5'4". I promise I'm not 5'4". But 
She put it down as 5'4", and my face was terrible, and my hair was greasy, and it looked <laughs> it looked gross. But the point I'm making is, sometimes when you're at the DMV, I didn't complain. I literally looked at it, and I was like, yeah, I mean, I don't care, dude. I was there. That was my first time ever being in the DMV and getting everything done. Uh, the first time being in the DMV that I wasn't, like, trying to get the driving test, whatever, the stuff like that. Like, actually trying to get shit done. And it was atrocious it was terrible it was disgusting i never want to go back to the dmv i'm so glad now when you have to renew your license you could just do it online now oh my god dude what a fucking outrageous grace from god itself the dmv is the worst place i've ever been it's so so terrible but this is a different problem i mean i guess if you're looking at yourself from six years ago and you're thinner and then you look back and you're like damn i'm fucking i'm big as fuck i gained some fucking weight why am i so fat Right? That's, uh, I would, uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel some type of way about that either. I feel, I feel some type of way about that way too. Even though, even though you know that there's nothing wrong with being fat, sure, but you're literally saying there's something wrong with it. You're looking at it and you're feeling depressed because you gained some fucking weight over the past six years. So you're saying that you feel one way, but then you're trying to convince yourself of something else. <laughs> All right. Some cognitive dissonance going on there. Nothing wrong with being fat. And you're actually eating enough now, and you have your mom's genetics who also gain weight in their 20s. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know why these people think of weight like that. Like, your genetics, bro? That's the reason why you gained weight in your 20s? Usually people will gain weight. Uh, let's go look at these tags real quick, though. Fat, fat acceptance, fat culture. Fat culture is fat. Fat culture is fat liberation, internalized fat isms. I just, I love people nowadays that can just say random shit and make it work. But if you are looking at your mom, most people will gain weight in their 20s in the sense of like you're filling out because you went through this time period of your teenage years where you're going through puberty. So all the calories that you would have needed are going towards the growth of you as a specimen of a human being. And you stop growing usually in your 20s. And because when you stop growing in your 20s, those excess calories and usually people start you know, working, they start making their own income, they start body body slimming copious amounts of calories. If you live in America, odds are you're probably working inside. You're going to fill out more. It is what it is, okay? And you're gaining weight and you're looking back at your old self and then you decide to go, it's not really me. It's because my mom is my mom. She gained weight in her 20s. I gained my weight in my 20s. What the fuck are you talking about? You gained weight because you ate too much. It's not because of your mom. It's not because of your family. It's not because of your genetics. You ate too much. That's just what it is. And if you feel some type of way about it, then it works. It's working. You're feeling some type of way about it. Own it. It's not that big of a deal. Lose some weight. If you're feeling bad about the pictures, the before and afters, then do something about it. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. You shouldn't feel that bad about it. All right, guys. We're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things help me grow in the algorithm so if you could do any of that stuff for me i would appreciate all that stuff i have membership so if you want to become a member of my channel you totally can if you don't want to that's fine too i want to thank everyone that is a member of the channel and everybody that subscribed as well you guys are amazing beautiful awesome spectacular beautiful people i love every single one of you including you i love you as well all the time if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now put it down below by typing in diet because obviously diet is everything it's all about if you want to lose weight that is the way to do it you have to specify the diet you have to make sure you're negating certain foods and enabling other foods and that's what's really appropriate and if we're talking about things that are appropriate i think my love for you is appropriate i think the caring the affection the beauty that you emanate is all obvious and because of that i love you on a daily basis all the time no matter what's going on you're amazing beautiful spectacular person man or woman i don't care i don't think if you think it's gay it's not gay it's just me finding appropriate love and affection for somebody as beautiful as you a specimen like you but anyway guys we're getting the video here if you want to check out my social media it'll be linked down below in the description it's just my instagram twitter discord and second channel where i upload other stuff on there so if you want to check out any of that stuff it's in the description of the channel it's also in the description of this video Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 